Morning all. It's now, I think it's about minus two in here. So it's real nippy in here this morning. It's that nippy. I've had to take the scales that I've done yesterday up to the house and let them spend the rest of the day in there in an ambient temperature for the epoxy. Because I've found when you leave the scales and it it's in this type of environment, it'll still go off perfectly fine, but uh, it takes obviously a lot, lot longer. Um, if you want um, an epoxy to, you know, if you use a five minute epoxy and you want that epoxy to have a slower rate, if you put the piece on a piece of aluminium um, plate or something, it will keep the piece cool and it slows the rate down of the, the epoxy. Um, video this morning, <laughs> I had an email uh, come through this morning, Lee have you and Del fell out? <laughs> no we haven't fell out, um, me, me and Del, we, you know we, we're good mates and um, this lot about the, the quench plates has stirred up a, a bit of a, you know, thing I think, but uh, like I said in the video, um, you know, it was my, it's, these are my opinions on it, and uh, I still stand by what I've said. And, um, you know, and my theories on it and all the rest of it. So what we're going to do uh, with this is, because I love tests and stuff like that. Um, you know, that they are an air hardening steel, and as a lot of you know, I'm a bit OCD anyway you know with heat treat and stuff like that so what we're going to do is we're going to run some tests we'll grind some D2 and we'll heat treat it and uh, as it's an air hardening steel we'll just hold it up in the air and with no plates no nothing and we'll just take it out of the oven hold it in the air and then we'll test it we'll grind grind it away make sure there's no decarb we'll stick it on the Rockwell tester and we'll test it and, and we'll just see see what happens um, this, the other processes I want to go through is because um, I don't want people to think that you can just take a piece of steel out of the oven being an air hardening steel and just hold it in the air and everything's going to be fine um, you do have to be careful, I mean I, this is a thing where you know you've got to be careful with what people think and stuff like that um, my theories on the, the, the plate quenching and the, and the bevels and stuff, well, I wanted to address that a little bit more. Um, there's a couple of ways, there's two or three ways of going down. Um, obviously, what plates are for, they're not just for um, eradicating warps. You know, they are to dissipate heat. You've got two ways of heat treating um, air hardening steels. You can either do it by air, compressed air, or you can put it in plates and that'll dissipate the heat away. Um, I think, I'm not sure, this is where the tests are going to come in. Maybe if you do, a, a, we'll do a 2mm piece as well. Maybe with, with it being that thin, air might be enough. You've got about two and a half, three minutes to get it beyond the nose basically. So um, a thin piece like that probably may be fine in the air. But we'll try a 4mm and we'll try a 5mm piece um, and see how we get on. Also, we'll do we'll grind some bevels away, and we'll do some without with the bevels as just one piece of steel. Um, I'll give you a couple of reasons why I'm not. Most people grind bevels away for one reason and one reason only. It's to save belts. That's why they do it. They don't see the point in taking a piece of steel with no bevels on, and then having to you know use a lot more belts than than necessary. That's why people grind bevels away first. It's not nothing to do with a better heat treat or anything or, you know, people grind bevels away first because they don't want to use extra belts. That's why it's done. Um, and by sending it off to a company um, with a, a, a controlled furnace, it allows you to do that. But as a home heat treat, with it, like I say, with an oil quench, you can get away with it because obviously the, the oil hardening steel is going in the oil and that's dissipating the heat but what I find boy, and the reasons why I don't do this at all um, is because it really really encourages warping and so does air um, yes the plates certainly help with 
um, and not warping. But if you grind the bevels away with the plates, it will still warp, even if you clamp them together. It, it, it just even sometimes with the plates, even without grinding the bevels away, I still get the occasional warp between the plates. And I think it's down to whether one's colder than the other. So what I tend to do a lot now is I keep the plates in a in a bucket with um, with icing just to keep them at an even thing. The other thing, the other reason why I don't like grinding the bevels away first is because when you're heat treating them, if you think about this, um, just like a thinner piece will dissipate heat quicker, a thinner piece will also get hot quicker. And I'm not mad keen on that edge being that thin or you know a millimetre that you leave for heat treating stuff. Uh, maybe in a in a big oven that you sent away, but in in your even heat, I mean it is only a thermocouple at the end of the day, and you know I do do lots of tests around the oven, but you do get varying degrees of heat in all ovens, no matter what oven it is, even heat paragon. I don't. You ask Sandy, he'll tell you the same. Um, both of us have done lots of tests with this, lots and lots of tests. Me and Sandy, we've done loads. You know what I'm like about this. I've also got a book here um, in a minute I'll switch you off and I'll bring you back and I'll show you the methods that you know an absolute legend uses for you know he used to use use plates now but uh, he used to use air for cooling it down not just in the air so um, we'll, I'll, I'll find that out and we'll go through that as well in a minute um, so there's some of the reasons and my reasonings behind why I don't like to grind the bevels off first you know, when I done the plate quenching thing, you know, I did put it out there, you know, I could be wrong, you know, and I wanted some advice on it. Um, it, it wasn't directed at anybody, and me and Dale laughed our heads off about that last night. It couldn't have been the worst timing at all, with him grinding a knife out and ground the bevels off first, and then done his heat treat like that, and I'm d done my plate thing, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, just really bad topic, um, but uh, he knows, and I know, we, We've been good mates for a long time, that it wasn't intentional, so I, I needed to say that too. I understand him doing his video and defending his thing, you, you know, I, I get that, That it, you know, that's great. I would do the same, um, but uh, I think we should do some tests and we'll, we'll, we'll see what pans out. And uh, I'm real looking forward to the tests and the results and stuff and, and we'll, see, we'll see how it gets on. Um, okay, so I'll bring you back in a minute, I'll find the book and I'll show you what I mean. I'll talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, doing it in a tube so we can circulate air, which certainly helps with the warping side of things. Like I say, I'm not mad keen on uh, a thin edge going into the oven, like due to the edge maybe getting a little bit more heat than it should do. My reasoning behind this all is a solid piece of steel will heat up evenly. If you put it on a set of plates, and um, the bevels are ground away, no matter which way you look at it, whether it's air hardening or not, and we'll, we'll, we'll prove this theory um, or not by taking a piece out and just air and just leaving it in the air and we'll see how we get on. But my theory on them not touching the plates, because you do need to dissipate the heat to bring it down beyond the nose to get the proper heat treat, um, still stands. You. You know, I, I can't see how that, that not touching the aluminium is going to be able to do its job. It, it, I just, I just, you know, like I said on my video, I could be wrong. We'll do some tests. I, I just can't see how that it's going to do its job. By air, I mean, if, you, if you've ground your bevels away and you put the plates on and you squirt some air in there, but then you have to be careful that the air's not hitting the one side more than the other, which is going to incur warping. That side's going to come down a lot quicker than the other, which is maybe going to cause it to twist. What I will say regarding heat treatment and all stuff like this, it's, it's a massive, massive thing. There's that many variables to go wrong, it's unbelievable. It's not easy getting a good heat treatment. It takes a lot of experimentation and a lot of hard work and a lot of trial and error. A lot of you don't know, I don't put, you know, I even sent a piece off and I had it put under um, a real high end, uh, it took it down to microscopic levels to check to see if whether the carboids in my D2 heat treat were forming as I wanted them to. Well, basically I was getting the best I could out of my heat treat. So, you know, and I paid for that to be done. Um, but uh, anyway, 
I needed to get this out there and I also wanted to let the person know that we've not fell out, this is not, um, you know, it was just bad timing. And um, there is things on forums about, um, you know, for and against and you don't have to and you do have to, but this is where testing comes in. Let's, let, let's just see. And um, we'll go from there. I'll get the book and I'll show you what. I'm back. Okay, so as you can see, There is your, how they used to quench. Um, now this is Bob Terrazula. Now he's not made just a few blades, he's made thousands of blades. Um, and what you can see him there popping it into the liquid nitrogen after. But um, basically this is how they used to do it. This is what they mean by air quenching. You have to put it in a fan or in front of a fan and the fan will dissipate the heat and bring the heat down enough to bring it past the point so your Martin's out and all the rest of it I'm not going to go into crazy detail here about the heat treat and the you can all look at you, you know the formations of carboids how to liquefy it and, and so it solidifies into the matrix I'm, I'm, you know I've done a lot of stuff on this and I've, I've, I've read a lot and I've done a, an awful lot of tests so um, I ain't going to go crazy into the metallurgy side of things, it's out there, you can read it and stuff, but basically that's one way of doing it. The other way is, like I said on my previous video, is putting it in a tube and what you do is you, you send the air in and circulate the air around and that way, if you've ground your bevels first, it, it, you know, hopefully, that the air all you know it gives it like a cyclone effect and it will give it an even quench down um, so you know there's a basically the plates or air because they're air hardening steels either way you've got to dissipate heat somehow to bring it past that level so um, my reasoning for the, the plates with the bevels not touching uh, as I've tried to explain is you know if the if the not if you've got a sabre grind and you've at least got half a bevel, the, the, the at least then the, the the quenching the coldness from the plate can draw through into the um, into the blade itself and then give you your quench. But with a full flat grind, because there's nothing there apart from the little tiny piece at the top, um, you know I can't see how the out of the heat. I mean, if there's somebody else who, but we're going to do these tests anyway. But if there's somebody else who's, you know, does this for a living, as in, you know, works with metal and testing and and, and their properties and everything else, would we'll maybe put some more in. If if they watch this and put some more insight into this, that'd be great because it is a big thing. And as stated, it has popped up here and there. I've not looked. It was off the cuff. You know, I just wanted to give my reasonings behind why I thought. That putting it on there, you know, you can't get a proper quench to dissipate the heat properly. That was my reasonings why, um, and I, this is why I wanted to ask. Um, anyway, I needed to do this, uh, especially for the person who thinks that we've, uh, we're we're going to start stabbing each other and <laughs> stuff like that. That's never going to happen. We're too close mates for all that. We've all got our opinions. We've both got our own opinions, and as North makers, we're a funny bunch. Um, but uh, so th there's my reasonings, and I'm looking forward to doing the tests, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing a piece just out in the air, and just seeing what goes on. You know, it might shock me, who knows? Um, we don't know. Um, I hope you look forward to watching the test, because I'm looking forward to it, because I've not done it before. I've not just took a piece out and held it in the air with no plates or no air. So I'm looking forward to going through that. Okay, I'm going to go and upload this now, and then I'll get on with a few more things. Take care all. I'll see you soon. Um, when this epoxy has gone off and everything, we'll get to sorting the scales out for the next part of the missing link. On to the next.